Well, this is very exciting for me because I got to tell you, the last box set of DVDs I ever bought. Uh-huh. I mean, nobody buys them anymore. <laughs> but the last box set of DVDs I bought was Entourage. Really? And now we've got Jeremy Piven, Ari Gold. Hug it out, bitch. He's on the phone. <laughs> Good morning, Jeremy. How are you, sir? Good. How are you guys? Excellent. Thank you. And, uh, and excited to, to have you into town. You're coming uh, to do some stand-up nights at Yuck Yucks uh, tonight through Saturday on Richmond and uh, and a bit of a a new venture for you in stand-up comedy. Yeah, I, I, I've been having a blast, man. I've, I've been doing stand-up and having so much fun doing it. And uh, actually, the first time I ever jumped up on stage was with your guy, Russell Peters, actually. Wow. At the Laugh Factory in L.A., and we were doing a charity. I got the bug, and I've been doing it ever since. So I can't wait to get there and unleash some comedy. Yeah, Jeremy, it's amazing that you're yes. doing this because, you know, yes. you're an actor who's done so many different things. And, and I would guess that being on a set, on a closed set, there's a safety net there. You can, you yes. know, do a scene, retake a scene, try it again. With comedy, yes. you are live. You are there. There's no shutting yes. it down or, or going back. It's a, it's a scary venture, I would think. Uh, it is a scary venture, but I love to. You know what? I, I come from the stage. I've uh, been doing theater my whole life, and I also traveled and um, was in the Second City Touring Company. So I, I, my background is in, obviously, is in comedy and sketch comedy and improv, so I feel like all roads have led to stand-up, and uh, it's pretty thrilling. I get, to, I get to talk about my life and what it's like and, you know, just my point of view of everything, and... Uh, you know, life on sets and, and growing up in a theater family, and you get a sense of who I am as opposed to maybe just, uh, for instance, a fictional character like Ari Gold. So selfishly, you get to get an idea of who I am. So it's, it's a blast. I've been, I've, been, I've been having an incredible time. People have just been coming out, and we're, and we're having so much fun. So it's been great. And of course, you know, Craig right off the top you know, mentions Ari Gold, and I think a lot of people, of course, uh, go to that with the, the, the long run and the success of Entourage, and of course, more recently, Mr. Selfridge, too. Yeah. Do you find that, that right away, even on stage, people are expecting Ari Gold or looking for that? Yeah, you know what's really funny is that I actually addressed that right away. <laughs> that even wasn't, that wasn't even like premeditated. It's just, it, it, the, the my act, it just kind of unfolded organically, if I can sound so pretentious. <laughs> and, you know, it's uh, I'm up there, and it's one of those things where you get a sense of who I am. Yes, that was an incredible character, man, and, and I am confused for that character sometimes. And... You know, uh, it, it 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 wasn't a documentary. Um, you know, so uh, they did. You know what I mean? Yes. So I, I you know, uh, I, I'm an actor, and, I, and the great thing about Canada is, I think that you guys are very much like, okay, in the way that it's it's just a real brilliant place that understands that. You know, I'm an actor, and that was a fictional character, and you go through rites of passage as an actor, and and so people. You know, in the States, I think they get confused. <laughs> and, um, you know, there, there is some typecasting going on, and I address it right away, and we have a blast. And listen, I enter into that character and address the audience as Ari at certain points <laughs> just to kind of have, have some fun and mix it up and just to show them that, you know, that character, it's fun to, to, to slip into that character and have some fun with people. But I'm, I'm a different person. And um, and so that's really fun to kind of go in and out of that. I mean, it's so funny. Like you and I talking about the act, it feels like I'm explaining a joke. <laughs> it feels like the least, like probably the least funny thing I could absolutely ever do. It's not easy to uh, explain stand up. I remember Eddie Murphy had the great line about, "Please don't go do my bits tomorrow at work. You're only going to ruin it for me." <laughs> Um, now, let's talk a bit about stand-up, because early on in your career, you got to work with one of the all-time greats in Gary Shandling, and I just yeah. recently watched Judd Apatow's The Zen of Gary Shandling. Uh, did you back then have the bug for stand-up comedy, and did, did any of, uh, of that man's true brilliance rub off? 
you know what? I didn't have the bug then, uh, just because I hadn't, I hadn't really, I, I hadn't tried it, and you know, I've been so lucky to be, you know, a pretty prolific actor my whole life and go from one job to the next. And Shandling was an absolute genius. And that was my first job out of college, wow. the Larry Sanders show. And, um, I, you know, and from there I did, I don't know if you guys ever saw where I actually played George Costanza yes. on Seinfeld. Absolutely. Which, which was a blast. And that was while I was doing the Shandling show. Um, he was a genius. Uh, and, yeah, it was amazing just to kind of be around that. and And that was like... You know, I was so young, and it was like graduate school for me. And to be around that was, there was nothing like that. And, uh, yeah, his brilliance was, it, it was pretty incredible to, to be around that, and I was incredibly spoiled. And that documentary was, was a lot, it told us and taught us a lot about spirituality and about being present. Um, and, yeah, that judge did a, did a brilliant job with that. And Gary, um, Gary was a really unique person, and that that show to this day holds up. And uh, yeah, I was very very lucky and, and grateful to to be around that, and and that show was incredible. And he was an incredible comedic force. And, and did he rub off on me? I hope so. I hope he did. Um, and you know, it was, part, it was definitely a part of my journey. So I didn't. I wasn't doing stand up then at all. But my my friends do stand up. I've been a fan of the form my whole life. And I last year I was doing a show called Wisdom of the Crowd, and I would I would rap a twelve fourteen hour day, and then I would jump up on stage and do my set. And you can't kind of halfway commit to stand up. You can't do it once a month and expect to get good. You got to kind of just put everything aside and really throw yourself into it. And that's pretty much what I've done. And uh, so I can't wait to get into it with Toronto at Yuck Yucks uh, this Thursday through Sunday. Mix it up with you guys. It's going to be incredible. People have been, been coming out, and we've been having a blast. So it's just really fun because in another, you know, I wouldn't get a chance to interact with people if I wasn't doing stand-up. You know, as an actor, you know, you may run into people on the street or whatever, um, but to have this interaction with people has been incredible. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm lucky to have this this outlet with the great Jeremy Piven on, on the phone and uh, as you mentioned Yuck Yucks this weekend which is great and you're coming from the states to do it and I believe there are no tariffs on comedy uh, <laughs> which is good uh, because uh, the political scene between the Canada and uh, and US has been a little uh, interesting as of late do you get political do you get personal uh, with your comedy uh, I do I mean listen we're living in the strangest of times right now <laughs> yes. and you know uh you know we're 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 pretty divided you know as a country and uh my god man um you know we're it's pretty surreal what's happening and uh you know uh we're just uh, we're trying to i i i would like to apologize for for everything that's going on right now and um yeah yeah i i i do i do get political i'm not like you know insanely didactic with my theme um you know, it's like uh, I, I, I enter into some characters. I do a bunch of impressions. Wow. I'll do every, every, everyone from, like, Stallone to Owen Wilson to <laughs> Mike Tyson. Nice. You know, just all these, like, incredibly obscure uh, different celebrities that – and impressions that I, I, you have to excuse me, it's really early in the morning, and I'm not going to lie to you, uh, I was dead asleep, you guys woke me up, I, 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 I have to be totally honest, I feel like I'm in a dream right now. Well, it's a nightmare talking yeah. to us, probably. Uh, I would suggest I, that. I, I, feel, I feel like someone woke up and just goes, oh, explain a joke, yeah. live on the radio right now, okay. well, really, give it a shot. You know what, we're a very easy, laid-back morning show here, so there's no rush to get to the end of it, and yeah. take a breath, no problem whatsoever. We're, we're half asleep most of the time anyway, too. Yeah, listen, I, you know, it's interesting, Jeremy, uh, with the with stand-up, because we've, we've talked to other people, we had uh, Lewis Black on a little while back, and... Talking to him about the, the, the ongoing, never-ending process of writing, because 
when you're doing stand up, it's it's constant. You're constantly changing your act. You can't keep uh, kind of doing the same hits. It's not like you're a band. It's not like you're the Rolling Stones and you're gonna do Satisfaction every night. You know, you gotta you gotta keep changing it. And it's a real pressure cooker to continually come up with new material. Do you find yourself writing every day? Yeah, every day. You know, and and what's so great now about technology is you can just pull out your phone and just hit. And just you know, record some voice notes. So thank thank God for that. You're not just kind of like it's not like back in the day where you're struggling and looking for a pen and grabbing a napkin and you know writing on people's backs. You know, um, <laughs> so so it's it's pretty great that you you have this technology. But no, you you write every day. You listen to your sets. You take notes, um, and and that's that's your job, and it's really fun and. Uh, yeah, you got You got to come up with new material all the time, but that's the exciting part of it. And you know, there are different ways to try your material. So you know, you 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 have a sense of it. And yeah, you're there is no second take. You know, but I, because I come from the theater, and the reality is, I'm a stage actor, and then I became a a film and TV actor. So I've I'm, I'm a stage actor first. So that's a space that I understand and I I know how to navigate, and um, so if if I didn't if I hadn't come from the stage and from doing sketch comedy and improv, um, and also you know even like with a character like Ari Gold, you know, it's funny because people all say, oh, you you were that character was totally improvised, and that's the trick of acting is that you're you're taking the written word and you're making it seem like you're improvising the whole time, and that's you know that's in a way. That's part of what stand-up is. You know, you, you, you're making it seem like it's comp- everything is off the cuff. And the reality is you do have a spine to your act and an idea of where you're going with it, but you're playing off the audience, and, you know, everything is supposed to feel and seem and look improvisational, and it may not all be. And you take it to another level with your audience, too, because part of your, your act, your hour, is to actually have an audience interaction part of it. How's that been going? It's been going great. Listen, there are two ways that I could do this. I could either get up there and just be like Jeremy Piven running out the clock, doing a Q&A, and doing it that way, which is not what I do, mm-hmm. or have it truly be stand-up. And you do have, I do have an interaction with, with the crowd. I, see, the, the thing is I don't want to give away too much of my act because I, you know, I want people to kind of be get there and be surprised and all that. But yeah, I enter into different characters and then kind of interact with the audience like that, so they get a sense of the of the improvisational nature of it, and you know, you know, give them. You got to give them what they want too. Yeah. You know, and just the idea that I grew up in a theater family that I was running lines with my mom for so many years, and she was playing, for instance, all the different characters in Entourage. The idea that, like, my mom would hear all that profanity <laughs> that Ari Gold was spitting out. You right, know what I mean? right. That's great. Yeah. Now, would listen uh, as Jeremy Piven and the career you've had. If Ari Gold was your uh, agent right now, would he be advising this stand-up career? <laughs> uh, probably not at all. <laughs> he, he would probably he would probably say, you know. You're going to go to Yuck Yucks, really? And work for $11, do 116 shows over the weekend? Really? That's what you're going to want to do? Ah, uh, you're kidding yourself, all right? <laughs> That's absolutely beautiful. It is such a pleasure, Jeremy. You know, years ago, uh, I saw you in a film called Very Bad Things, and your line, your kid is one crutch away from his own telethon, <laughs> always sticks out in my mind as one of the funniest lines in any movie I've ever seen. That movie must have been so great. The, the cast of Very Bad Things with Christian Slater and, of course, you had uh, John Favreau and Daniel Stern yeah. as your brother. That movie was just outstanding. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. You just reminded me that, my God, that you just, you just sent me back. <laughs> that, that actually was an improv line. And, um, they, you know, stand-ups call it writing on stage when you're improvising, which which is, is such a funny term to me. And I guess, you know, I've been doing that my whole life as an actor. Um, and guys like Pete Berg, who, who wrote and directed that movie, who are brilliant and, and, and allow you to improvise, 
and to explore like that, and then are smart enough to keep it in the movie. Um, yeah, I've been really lucky to work with geniuses like that, and that cast was incredible. And that's one of those movies that it was a true dark comedy. Yeah. And they, you know, I did I did another one called Gross Point Blank with John yep. Cusack, which is another like epic, you know, dark comedy. And so I've been. I've been really lucky in that way, and that's why I said and it's a cliche, but all roads lead to stand up. Yes, you know, people, there are cliches about what people say about, like, they'd rather be held at gunpoint than do stand up. <laughs> you know, and it's like, it, it is, it's not an easy art form. And I have to get up and work in dive bars and all different venues to try to get it together enough to be able to feel like I can navigate this world. But that's what's so great. There, there are all these rites of passage that you've got to walk through as a stand-up to figure this out. You know, you can't just all of a sudden... I think maybe Ed, they say that Eddie Murphy was the only one who could kind of, like, right from the jump, just kind of get up on stage and hit it yeah. as a kid. So uh-huh. he was one of the, one of the, the only ones. You know, well, you watch a documentary like Comedians with Jerry Seinfeld mm-hmm. and, you know, him and and, uh, and Chris Rock talking about going in and, and working out five-minute sets at a time and how hours upon hours are put into just putting together five minutes. I mean, I remember once trying it. I got an offer to do five minutes of stand-up. Took me weeks to write two <laughs> minutes, and I gave up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, that that's the great thing. It, it Stand-up does weed through people. And uh, it weeds out the people that are faint of heart and don't want to put the work in. And unfortunately, you know, your one experience being viciously mediocre turned you away. That's, <laughs> hey, that's a good line. That might be the name of his book, his <laughs> memoirs, Vicious, Viciously Mediocre. Yeah, that's me. That's this morning uh, show. <laughs> no, listen, you know that if you had the bug, you got to get up and do it all the time. And, yeah, it is you know, they call it going to the gym when you're up at a dive bar and there are a couple of comics standing in the back with their arms folded and uh, a few other people that are in there that don't want to be there and you're not getting any laughs. How, can you stand, can you stay in the pocket, stay up there? And, you know, I remember I got up at this dive bar not too long ago and I said, you guys are probably all wondering what I'm doing here. And the guy's like, yeah, man, what are you doing here, man? <laughs> and... And I was just like, oh, my God, Like the crowd was so hostile. Right. I was like, you know, my God, you know, like even though I've been in their living rooms for, you know, decades, they were just angry. Right. You know, and it was it was really interesting. Well, it's, and late, and they've, got, it's late and they've mixed alcohol into it. That's always. <laughs> a... Yeah. You know, a, you know, angry drunk people are, you know, it's it's part of it, man. You got it. You got to perform in front of them and somehow get them. And if you can get them and turn them and make them laugh, then you can make a room full of people that are happy to see you laugh. And that's, it's like that's your reward, is walking into a place like Yuck Yucks. See, at the transition I just made, you no, guys? Yeah. Oh, that was brilliant. brilliant. That was good. Now, Jeremy Piven's done this before. <laughs> Very, Jeremy, thank you so much, man. This has been outstanding and a, really, honestly, a true treat for me because I'm just a massive fan, and we do really look forward to seeing you at Yuck Yucks this weekend. Thank you. I'm there Thursday through Sunday, and I expect you guys to be there and the rest of Toronto. I look forward to it, man. Take care, you guys. Cheers. Cheers. There he is, Jeremy Piven. You can get your tickets. Go see him. Yuck Yucks Toronto this weekend.